Tonight, thanks to NFL Films, we bring you a special presentation of Super Bowl I. A game that was played January 15, 1967, and it was indeed a monumental day in sports history. Two professional football leagues came together as one. The AFL champion, Kansas City Chiefs. The NFL's Green Bay Packers. Here's Jim Simpson and George Ratterman on the call. From the Coliseum in Los Angeles, with sunny skies, temperature in the 70s, and what a day. We're going to have football line up here. Got to take it down, fella. Okay. This is it, the American Football League National Football League Championship. The Kansas City Chiefs, winner of the championship in the newer AFL against the Green Bay Packers, who have won the NFL championship. To our right, the yellow end zone with Chiefs spelled out in red letters and the American Football League emblem. To our left, in green letters spelled out Packers. Kansas City will be introduced first. At left guard, number 71 from Michigan State, huge Ed Buddy. At right tackle from Auburn, number 73, Dave Hill. At left tackle from Ohio State, number 77, Jim Tyrer. The split end from Stanford, number 88, Chris Burford. At tight end from Michigan State, number 84, is Fred Arbanis. The flanker from Prairie View, number 89, Otis Taylor. And listen to the roar greeting the announcement of Mike Garrett, number 21, who played here at Southern California. At fullback from Kansas, number 32, is Curtis McClinton. And at quarterback from Purdue, number 16, Lenny Dawson. And now will come head coach Hank Stram, his assistants, and the remaining members of the Kansas City Chiefs. And now the offensive lineup for the Green Bay Packers. From Georgia Tech, number 50, Bill Curry. At right guard from Idaho, number 64, Jerry Kramer. His running mate at left guard from Valparaiso, number 63, Fred Fuzzy Thurston. The right tackle from SMU, number 75, Forrest Gregg. The left tackle from Indiana, number 76, captain of the offensive unit, Bob Skoronsky. The split end from Virginia Tech, from BPI, number 84, Carol Dale. The tight end from Utah, number 81, Marv Fleming. The flanker from Colorado, number 86, Boyd Dowler. And Elijah Pitts, number 22 of Philander Smith, will start at running back. The other running back at fullback from LSU, number 31 is Jim Taylor. And the quarterback from Alabama, number 15, is Bart Starr. And now head coach Vince Lombardi, his assistants, and the rest of the Packer squad. Green Bay has won the toss and will receive the football of this first AFL-NFL championship. Thousands of people here in the stands, and there are millions of people on television, and everyone looking, and all with speculation, to see what kind of a game the Green Bay Packers are going to play today. Right? Right. right? I want you to be proud of your profession. It's a great profession. You'd be proud of this game, and you can do a great deal for football today. Great deal for all the players and the league and everything else. Go out there and play this ball game like I know you can play it. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get out there! Run out there! And Fletcher Smith, number 17, will kick off for Kansas City. And Anderson and Adderley are stepping up to about the 4 or 5, anticipating a shorter kick from Fletcher Smith of Kansas City. The Super Bowl is underway, and it is a short kick from Smith. Adderley at the 6, across the 10, running to his right. Across the 15, cuts back up to the center of the field and gets to the 25-yard line where he is piled up there. It'll be first and 10 for Green Bay. Mark Starr calling signals on the first play of the game. Jim Taylor picks up two or three yards, going over his own right side. Before E.J. Holland came across from his right side linebacker spot and knocked him down at the 29, a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. And off to Elijah Pitts. Pitts back to the line of scrimmage, running off his own left side and out near the 35-yard line, just shy of the first down. Third down and one. The Packers have picked up nine on two running plays. Call signals. Hands off to his fullback, Taylor. Taylor's got the first down, but he hits to the 37. Boy, Dollar, we understand, is out for the game. Apparently he suffered quite an injury and will be out for the ball game. And the good flanker back, who's made 29 catches this year, will not see any further action. And Max McGee has replaced Boyd Dollar, who has an injured shoulder. Carol Dale to the right, and Bart Starr's going to try his first pass. In the pocket, looking for his man, it is underthrown, intended for Max McGee at the 47-yard line. 
Johnny Robinson was back there to defend and had not the ball been underthrown, George Redman, Robinson might have had an interception. He had 10 on the year. It's second and 10. 12 and a half minutes to go. First quarter, no score. Green Bay received the kickoff. Now has the ball on the 37. On second and 10, Starr drops straight back. And is going down for loss for the 26-yard line by Buck Buchanan, the right side tackle. A long loss from the 37 back to the 26, 11 yards. And on the first straight drop back pattern of Starr, Buchanan, the four-year veteran from Brambling College, got through to make the tackle. Third down and long yardage. Harold Dale to the right. Bar Fleming split as Elijah Pitts goes into the slot to the left. Third down and 21 yards. Star back. Going to be hit and is dropped as he hits to the 21-yard line. And that is all. Kansas City was in on him. Bobby Bell blitzing from the left side. And Green Bay will be forced to kick the ball away. Picked up one first down, but then were thrown from their own 37. Little or no wind here today. And so the wind is not a factor on the Chandler punt. Chandler just does get the kick away, but it is a boomer. That is Mike Garrett at the 28-yard line. Jockey. Gets past one man, cuts to the right side, across the 30, still on his feet and dragged out of bounds as he hits to the 37-yard line. And Mike Garrett brings the ball back to the 37, will stay in the game, and Kansas City for the first time today goes on offense. No score in this, the first quarter, with about 10 minutes left. Kansas City sends Garrett in motion. Dawson rolls out to the left, looks for one man on the far side, and he has got it out of bounds. Chris Berber caught that ball out of bounds. And we had an example of Kansas City's moving pocket as Lenny Dawson did not drop straight back but faded back to his left and then set up. As we pointed out before, he will not throw on the run, but he will set up with this moving pocket either to the right or to the left. That time he went to the left. Dawson, a long count. Hands the ball to Garrett. Garrett at the line of scrimmage and May had picked up a yard or two and is still on his feet and gets across the 40. A great individual effort. That's Mike Garrett, four yards from the 37 to the 41. Third down and six. High formation, but now Garrett steps over to the right, looking for Burford as Dawson has him first down across the 50 in Green Bay territory to the 47-yard line. High formation. Ball is handed to Garrett, and Garrett's going nowhere. The Green Bay Packers defensive line rose up and knocked him down. It'll be second and ten. Too much time, I believe, will be the charge against Lenny Dawson. And will cost him five yards. And will make it second down and 15. And that takes the ball back into Kansas City territory at their own 48-yard line. Dawson calling the signals. Dawson rolling to the right. Dawson throwing has a man in the clear. And he's got it on a great catch. But they say he is out of bounds. Chris Burford, for the second time, made a catch. But could not keep both feet in bounds. On third down and 15. Taylor wide to the right. No score, and this is the first quarter. Dawson back to throw, looking for Taylor, and he overthrows Taylor as well as Herb Adderley at the 25-yard line. And now Kansas City will send in Gerald Wilson to do the kicking. Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson are within their 15, standing at about the 12. Wilson, with all the time in the world, drills one, driving Anderson back to the five. Running laterally to his left, gets a fine block, is up to the 10, tries to come down the side, across the 15, and is pulled down from behind as he hits to the 20-yard line. No score, nine minutes and 10 seconds to go. Bart Starr in the Green Bay offense back in there is still Elijah Pitts, who has the ball now and is running wide to the right. Freddie Williamson came up to hit him, gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Star dropping straight back, throws over the center. It's complete to Mark Fleming, and he's got the first down across the 30 out to the 34-yard line. First down for the Packers, their second of the ball game. Daller, or rather Dale, is the flanker to the left as Star goes straight back in trouble, runs out of the pocket, gets the ball away, completes the pass, has Elijah Pitches across the 50 down to the 45 and to the 43 on a play in which Mark Star had to scramble from a mass of tacklers led by Jerry Mays. He stepped out of the pocket and found Elijah Pitts at the 45, and he raced it down to the 43 of the Kansas City Chiefs, where Green Bay in the scoreless ball game has the ball first and 10. Quick pitch to Jim Taylor, coming to the left, in trouble, and will be dragged down for a loss back in Green Bay territory. A loss of about five at second and 15. Carroll Dale wide to the right. 
McGee to the left. Bart Starr dropping straight back, looking. Has plenty of time. Throws to Carol Dale, who has got the ball at the 37-yard line. Not enough for the first down. Third down three from the 37. Dale to the right, McGee to the left. Starr dropping straight back. Hit as he throws, has the ball. step off and Max McGee it was Gerald Hedrick who had a hand on him but McGee simply ripped his way out of his grasp and it's a 37 yard touchdown play a great catch by McGee who uh, you might say uh, had no business catching the ball actually it wasn't uh, too well thrown McGee made a great stab though uh, and the defensive man there I'm sure thought that McGee had no chance to get it Don Chandler will do the extra point kicking Ball is placed down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. There's time out on the field with the score now. Green Bay 7, Kansas City, nothing. Don Chandler will kick it off. Six minutes, four seconds to go here in the first quarter. The Packers have scored first on the pass to McGee. He made a great catch and a fine run. Cohn and Garrett are deep. It is Mike Garrett. He'll take it at the two. Garrett goes to his left, cuts back to his right, looking for daylight, steps around one man, across the 20, flags go down, over on the 27-yard line, and they're in consultation now at the 26-yard line. And they're stepping off yardage, back inside the 15-yard line, and placing the ball down on the 12. Jim Simpson with George Rademan, first down on the 13-yard line. Burford goes to the left, Taylor is split to the right. Dawson calling signals. 7 to nothing. Green Bay leads. Dawson rolls out. Going to pass from his end zone across the 10. Now has running room across the 15. Coming out to the 20 and dragged down on the 21-yard line. The scrambling of Len Dawson apparent there, George Radovan, and Ray Nitschke came over and made the stop at the 21. Instead of being thrown near his end zone, he got out and across the 20. Packers put a lot of pressure on Dawson that time. He went back, as he will do frequently, he faked a running play before going back to pass, faked the draw play. High formation, Taylor split wide left with Burford set in the slot to the left. Dawson on a quick little pitch to the side, and down he goes. Race down is Lionel Aldridge making the tackle. Kansas City has a first down. Quick opener, and down goes Burford, and the ball goes over his head, and defensive interference is being caught on the far sideline as Burford was knocked off his feet by Bob Jeter and Tommy Brown before he even got the ball. I'm sure that the penalty is being called against Jeter. Taylor this time is split wide right with Burford set in the slot to the right. Curtis McClendon, for the first time today, gets the call to carry the ball. It goes out across the 30-yard line and picks up perhaps four yards on the play. They've come out here, made a first down. They showed they can operate under pressure. Garrett is the lone setback. Dawson rolls to his left, looks downfield. Arbatis is there. And down to the 40-yard line of Green Bay for a first down. Ball is placed down now on the 49-yard line of Kansas City. Dawson on first down from his own 49. Hands to Mike Garrett. Is across the 50, across the 45, and spins his way down to the 41-yard line. Near a first down. By formation now. Dawson on second down and inches is back to pass with lots of time now in trouble. Looking, gets past one man, has his own first down across the 40-yard line and is driven back across the 41. Dawson looking for running room, did get enough for the first down. But Ray Nitschke, the middle linebacker, came up very quickly. Taylor wide right, Burford set in the slot and Mike Garrett with the ball and down he goes. Wrestled down by big number 89, the left side linebacker Dave Robinson of Penn State. On second down, 11. Garrett goes in motion to the left. Dawson rolling out to the left, looking to throw. Gets rid of the ball. Way over the head of Chris Burford. It is third and 11. I'm running out in this, the first quarter. A little bit more than a minute to go. And Dawson is dropping straight back and looking and has his man, Carolyn, across the 35, down to the 33-yard line. It'll bring up a fourth down. Mike Mercer is coming in. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt as the Chiefs try to get on the board for the first time. Mike Mercer is ready. Dawson spots the ball. The kick is up. 
It is long and it is off to the left side and the Chiefs have failed to score. Green Bay takes over on the 20. 34 seconds to go in this quarter. Carol Dale is wide to the right. And on first down, Jim Taylor is given the job of cracking over the right side of his own lot. I'm running out. The gun sound. And the first quarter is over. That's the end of the first quarter of the score. Green Bay 7 and Kansas City nothing. We are at the end of the first quarter with the Packers leading the Chiefs 7 to nothing. Now, keep in mind, the groundwork for Super Bowl I actually came together in the summer of 1966 when then-Dallas Cowboys GM Tech Schramm and AFL founder and Chiefs owner Lamar Hunt had a little powwow in Schramm's car of all places at Love Field in Dallas. There, the two hammered out the blueprint for the merger between two leagues that would change a sport forever. In the early 1960s, football fans could watch two professional leagues each autumn. The tradition-bound NFL or the wide-open action of the newly formed American Football League. They didn't meet on the playing field, but did compete fiercely by holding separate college drafts and opposing each other in the courts. We've been in litigation for over three and a half years with the American Football League, and there hasn't been much opportunity to think of anything beyond our own league. Our main concern right now in the NFL is making it as strong as possible. The NFL held the upper hand until 1964, when they were caught off guard after the AFL signed a lucrative television deal with NBC. This enabled the new league to spend big on such college stars as Joe Namath. Tony, do you hope that the war between the two leagues comes to an end? Well, I don't know that there is a, a war between the two leagues, except insofar as the competition for the young players are concerned. I don't believe that it's common sense. I don't believe that uh, there's any right for it to go on to the extent that it is going on presently. Well, as a matter of fact, Sonny, if you played them and there's not going to be any game between your league and the NFL, they would probably beat your brains out. Well, uh, I guess we could discuss that from now to doomsday since you start by saying that there isn't going to be a game. A championship meeting between the two leagues seemed impossible after the New York Giants signed away the AFL's best place kicker. The AFL retaliated by rating top NFL stars still under contract. Cooler heads eventually prevailed and the two leagues negotiated a merger agreement in 1966 that would include a championship game. I think it's beneficial to both, frankly, and, and very beneficial to the fans all around the country. I don't want to sound corny on that, but uh, when you look at all aspects of this as a championship game, I think this is the, personally, I think it will be one of the biggest sporting events of the year, every year. Just seven months later, Hunt's Chiefs would play in the very first Super Bowl. No one had played a neutral site championship game, and at that time it was the only pure AFL-NFL game that was ever played because after that year's uh, championship game, there was a common draft, then there began to be a little mixture of what the pure AFL was like. Coming up, the Chiefs give the Packers more than they bargained for. And we'll be joined by Chiefs Hall of Fame quarterback Len Dawson. You will not believe what he was doing during halftime. Stick around. Second quarter. Second down and seven from the 23-yard line of Green Bay. Carroll Dale goes out wide left, split to the right. He is Max McGee, the touchdown maker. With Elijah Pitts still in there along with Jim Taylor. Box guard drops straight back and looks and overthrows McGee at the sidelines at the 29. So it'll be third and seven. Carol Dale goes wide to the left. McGee again to the right. Star dropping back on third down seven. Flag is down. Across the middle. Juggled up in the air. No good. Intended for Carol Dale at the 45-yard line. Fourth down and seven. Under sunny skies in Los Angeles, Chandler standing at his own 10-yard line, gets the boot away from the 14. A low spiral, Emmett Thomas takes it at the 33. Starts backwards, now comes back up field across the 30, and is finally wrestled down at the 34-yard line by Steve Wright. All right, give it to go! Burford split about five yards to the left. Len Dawson on first down from the 33, rolling to the right, being pursued. 
And now throws back across field to Mike Garrett at the 35. Gets away from two men. On his feet. Across the 45, near midfield. Down to the 49-yard line in the first down goes Mike Garrett with a twisting and turning run. He must have stepped away from five or six men. But the man who had the best shot at him was the linebacker Dave Robinson. Taylor flanked to the right. Burford split to the left. Ball is handed off to Garrett again, and Garrett gets down to the 45-yard line. Check that. It is Burt Cohn down to the 45. Ball is placed back now near the 46, so we'll call it a gain of only three, a long three at that. It'll be second down seven, with Taylor split left and Burford set in the slot. Straight ahead goes McClendon on a trap play down to the 40, down to the 39-yard line, and nearer first down. Third down and about a yard. Dawson has him out of the huddle. Hands off to Cohn. Cohn has got the first down down to the 37-yard line. About 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. Green Bay leading 7-0. But Kansas City has the ball. Dawson back to pass with plenty of time. Loops one long for Taylor who is clear. He's got it at the 7-yard line and is back down there. Otis Taylor was deep in back of his man and actually had to slow up for the pass. It was Tom Brown covering him. First down and goal to go at the 7. And again, Lenny Dawson helped to free his receiver as he does quite frequently by faking the running play before throwing the ball to Taylor. Taylor was wide open and Lenny was careful, didn't lead him too much, threw the ball out there perfectly. But Lenny Dawson helped ever so much on that play as he does quite frequently on his pass plays. And now Kansas City with a chance, comes out on the eye formation. Dawson calling signals on first down, keeps to the ball, rolls out to the right, he's got a man clear, touchdown! Six Green Bay. And he not only had a man clear, he had two men clear down in the end zone. Chris Burford and McClinton were standing down there side by side as once again, as we described on the last play, Lenny Dawson made the good fake. Fake the running play into the line and then stepped back, found two receivers side by side down in the end zone. Mike Mercer, who tried a 40-yard field goal and missed, but is 33 for 33 in the conversion department, comes in and tries to tie up this Super Bowl game, which has been super so far. Ball is placed down. The kick is in the air, and the kick is good. Tie ball game. There's timeout on the field with a score. Green Bay 7, Kansas City 7. From the Coliseum in Los Angeles, 7-7 ball game this Super Bowl. 10 minutes, 41 seconds to go in the first half. Fletcher Smith will kick off. Donnie Anderson and Herb Adderley are deep. Both are dangerous. Smith really puts his foot into this one. And this is Anderson across the 15, coming straight up the middle, and is hit as he gets to the 25 and rolls to the 27-yard line. Carroll Dale goes wide to the left. McGee is split about five yards to the right. This is Elijah Pitts, goes across his own left side and is dragged down, a pickup of about five. Second down and five after that five-yard gain, and again, it is Carroll Dale to the left, and McGee split about five yards to the right. Fleming, the tight end, is on the left side. Strong side right, Jim Taylor rolling along the line of scrimmage and picks up a yard or two on individual effort and near the first down. Third down and one. Green Bay scored first on a 37-yard pass play from Star to McGee. Kansas City came back moments ago on a seven-yard pass play from Dawson to McClinton. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Third down one. Star gambling has his man. Dale clear at the 40. He will go all the way and score. On third down one, Bart Starr caught the Kansas City secondary thinking of something else. and the Packers are walking slowly back upfield. And ignoring the flag, which will call this play back and will take the touchdown away from Green Bay. An infraction against Green Bay was detected on that play, a 15-yard penalty. Check that, uh, George. It was a five-yard penalty for a legal motion. It is now third right. down and nearly six yards. And I'm sure that the Kansas City secondary is talking to itself. What a break they had. Now on the important third down six, Star drops back to throw again. Goes over the middle and has his man. It is Max McGee. And McGee has the first down out across the 40 to the 41. Ball is on the 42-yard line. First and 10 for the Packers in a 7-7 ball game. We're midway through the second quarter. 
Starr goes back to throw, looks downfield. His receiver comes back up and cannot hold on to it. Covered very closely by Willie Mitchell. And I want to tell you, Los Angeles, if nothing else, turned on one of the greatest days for football. In mid-January, you could see perfect playing conditions. Dale is to the left and Bob Long is to the right. Starr going straight back. Now throws down. He has Elijah Pitts covered by a linebacker, E.J. Holland. But Starr's pass was off the mark. Third down 10 on the Packers' own 42-yard line. Starr drops back the throw. Throws across, has his man Dale in the clear at the 43-yard line, and that should be enough for the first down. Knocked down there by Bobby Hunt and Johnny Robinson. Long is split wide to the right. Ball is handed to Jim Taylor, running laterally to his left, and is knocked down as he turns the corner by Willie Mitchell, who simply dove at his feet. Second down six. Pitts picks up a couple of yards. It is third down and five from the 38-yard line of Kansas City. Star calling signals. Drops straight back on third down. Looks across the center, and a great catch by Marv Fleming. Inside the 30-yard line, and that'll be enough for the first down. Max McGee has come back in. Dale to the right. Hand off, and straight ahead goes Jim Taylor, but Jerry Mays does not allow him to get more than a yard or two as he gets down near the 25-yard line. Five minutes and 41 seconds to go in this half. Second down. Star hands off to Elijah Pitts, who gets another yard or two, and that's all. Buck Buchanan, the right tackle. And this is another third down situation, as you said. McGee is to the left. Dallas to the right. Star throws to Pitts, and Pitts goes out of bounds. He made the catch for the first down inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Dale is Thomas flipped to the right. From the 14, Jim Taylor starts around the left side. Steps back inside the 10-5. Score! From 14 yards out. And Taylor was hit by Hurston at the line of scrimmage, but simply broke the tackle. And a great example of this Green Bay power offense is four green jerseys went around the left end that time, one of them belonging to Jim Taylor, who had the football, but three blockers right there with him, three blockers right in front of him. And any time you can turn the corner, get around the end with three blockers in front of you, you're going to go a long way. And, of course, Jim Taylor doesn't need any instructions on how to get into the goal line under situations such as that. Don Chandler in, and the ball is held by Scar. The kick is good, and Green Bay goes out in front, marching 73 yards in 14 plays. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Chandler is ready to kick off. It is Cone and Garrett who are deep. Garrett at the 10. Across the 15. Balancing off his own men. Using his hands to try to set up his blocks. And is finally knocked down as he hits out to the 26-yard line. Dave Haithcock of Memphis State. I formation shifting now with Taylor and Arbana split right. Burford split to the left. And now Garrett is in the... Well, here comes Dawson rolling out to the left. And he is in trouble. Can't get the ball away. Knocked down inside the 15-yard line. Back there was Henry Jordan leading the way. Second down and about 18 to go. I formation. Taylor goes wide to the right. Dropping straight back is Dawson. That's the ball go. Has his receiver at the 30-yard line. Still on his feet, and I believe Arbanis has been hit in the shoulder. It was Fred who caught the ball at the 30, but as he was hit and hit hard by Nitschke, you could almost see him buckle, and he is now walking off the field. A pickup of 12 at his third down and six with the ball on the 35 of Kansas City, 14 to 7, Green Bay leading. Dawson drops back on third down and has his man Taylor. Taylor's got the first down across the 40, out to the 42-yard line. And Otis Taylor was a fine second-year flanker, 6-2-2-11 from Prairie View, is showing many people what a good flanker he really is. First down at the 41. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Dawson fakes the handoff. Back, looking, has Burford. Down to the 30-yard line. It's on first down from a 32. Garrett has the handoff and is down to about the 30. And look out, Mike. Dawson calling signals. McClendon and Garrett in the backfield. And fumble and quickly picked up Curtis McClendon. 
A minute and 35. Dawson drops back. A little flip pass to Mike Garrett, who's stepping around at the 20. Gets through two tracklers and inside the 25-yard line now, dear, down to the 23. And near the first down. And time becomes of the essence. And checking, Kansas City has a couple of timeouts left. Mike Mercer is coming in. The ball will be spotted by Dawson at the 31-yard line. Ball is snapped. Put down, Mercer kicks, and this one is good. Kansas City crossed within four points. Green Bay is out in front now by the score of 14 to 10. Fletcher Smith will kick off to Donnie Anderson and Herb Adderley, and this is a short kick, Higgins at the 22, picked up now by Adderley. And Adderley gets out to near the 25-yard line. It was knocked down there with about 50 seconds to go in the first half. This is Elijah Pitts coming to the right side, and he gets a good block and comes out near the 30-yard line. And there is the gun. That's the end of the first half, and the score, Green Bay 14, Kansas City 10. We are at halftime of Super Bowl I with the Packers leading 14-10 to 10 over the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, we recently caught up with Chiefs quarterback Len Dawson and asked the Hall of Famer what it was like taking on the NFL and what he was doing at halftime of Super Bowl I. All right, Len, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate the time. That's my, my pleasure. You're going to talk about Super Bowl IV, right? Uh, we, we would love to get to that. We'll get that in about three years from now when we uh, piece that one back together. So, okay. okay, so here we are. It, it's halftime. The Packers are up 14-10 to 10 in a game that a lot of the pundits said you were going to get blown out of the water in the first 30 minutes anyway. What was the tone in the locker room? Uh, the tone in the locker room was a very positive one because uh, we, we thought we had a shot at them. That, uh, first of all, most people didn't think we'd even score anything against the Green Bay Packers and that great defense that they had. But at halftime, we said, hey, we got a shot at these people. We can't make too many mistakes, but uh, we have a, an opportunity. Could you feel a sense of disrespect on the other side of the football from the Green Bay Packers during the game? Not so much that uh, because uh, a lot of the guys on on Green Bay's team and guys on my team, you know, they either played together or played against each other at the collegiate level. So uh, not that much. It was, uh, you know, Nit Nitsky was right in front of me there. What a wonderful man that he is, <laughs> knowing that he wanted to get his hands on my throat. But uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I'm curious for you on a personal level. You were drafted number five overall by the Pittsburgh Steelers in the NFL. Didn't make it there. You got traded to Cleveland in the NFL. Didn't make it there. Was there a sense for you that I kind of had to show everybody that I could play this game at this level? I really never had an opportunity to play it for Pittsburgh or Cleveland. I think I started once for, for Pittsburgh, once for Cleveland, but I never started and finished a game, whether it be a preseason game or a regular season game. But the thing is, this guy by the name of uh, Hunt, Lamar Hunt, decided he wanted to have a league called the American Football League, and he hired a guy by the name of Hank Stram mm -hmm. as his head coach of the Dallas Texans. Well, Hank Stram was one of my coaches at Purdue University, and uh, I just wanted an opportunity to play. And I felt that he had the best way that, that he possibly could to at least try me. And he did that, and so consequently, I was rusty. At five, five years in the league, and you don't play, you are going to be very rusty. Hopefully, uh, you know, I could get over that. And Hank Stram was someone who knew me very well and, and worked with me to improve my, the, what I had been doing at Purdue University. I want to get back to Mr. Hunt for a second. The founder of the AFL, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs. Was there a little extra fight among the players say, hey, let's get this for this guy because he's the reason we're playing professional football. You have a very good point there because uh, look at me. They threw me out of the National Football League. Just let me because I, I asked Paul Brown to put me on waivers. And they did that in June, and generally June was a, a, year, a month that the assistant coaches took off before the season gets underway. And a lot of the teams didn't know I was, well, I was on waivers. So consequently, I went through freely so I could sign with any team that I wanted. And fortunately, Lamar Hunt uh, had formed the league, and, and we were all very grateful for the opportunity to play professional football. And so, uh, you know, yes, I'm very grateful for that. 
Uh, finally, Lenny, a, a lot of people are curious what you might do at halftime of a big game, say a Super Bowl. We do have a picture of you. And, of course, you are firing up a heater <laughs> there in the bathroom. And there's a guy behind you wearing Mickey Mouse ears. Please tell me you have this photo framed somewhere in the Dawson household. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I think it's in the attic someplace uh, where it's hard to find. But, yes, I have, seen, I have seen that photograph of me smoking. Thank goodness I gave up smoking years and years ago. But, uh, yeah, that's been the talk not only around Kansas City but all across the country. <laughs> Len Dawson, we Evidently appreciate it. you guys found out. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, we've got a pretty good research department around here at NFL Network. We appreciate the time. We promise you uh, in three years we'll talk about your Super Bowl four victory in which you were named MVP, and we'll invite you back then, okay? Very good. We're accustomed to Super Bowl halftime shows featuring the biggest stars in music. Well, Super Bowl I was a little bit different, as the bands from the universities of Arizona, Michigan, and Grambling were the headline act. Joined by a few guys straight out of the space program. Chandler will tee the ball up again at the 40-yard line. This one is a very high and very short kick. Burt Cohn comes up to the 13. Straight up field across the 20, now going to his right side and is knocked down very quickly as he hits to the right side by number 27. This Burford comes out wide left. Otis Taylor goes to the right in an eye formation. Packers have a lot of men bunched along the forward wall. Dawson rolling to his right, now has running room across the 30, across the 35, and steps out of bounds as he hits to the 43-yard line. The Packer defense collapsed downfield. As you say, the defensive secondary of the Packers, almost all of them were turned around running back downfield with Otis Taylor, so when Lenny Dawson started to run there, they didn't even know it for, uh, for a while until he had gained some 5 or 10 yards. First and 10 on the 44. Again, a six-man line, and McClinton goes straight ahead and gets from his own 43 down to about the 48-yard line. Garrett is set in the slot, but it is straight ahead. That is Garrett straight ahead, and Lionel Arkwich made the tackle. Big play for Kansas City and Green Bay, third down and a long four. Now Arbanus is back in. He re-injured his shoulder, but is back in. Dawson being rushed and throws, it is intercepted. And down the sidelines comes Willie Wood. Only one man can get him at the 10 and drags him down at the four-yard line. A big break. Mike Garrett finally came from behind to get Willie Wood at the four-yard line. And the defensive prowess of Green Bay, never more evident there. Dawson was pressured through out to the left and hung the ball up and Wood cut in front of the receiver and carried the ball from midfield down to the four. And one of the few times when we will see either one of these quarterbacks, Lenny Dawson or Bart Starr, do that. Jim Taylor, the setbacks with Dale wide to the left. That is Pitts, touchdown on the first play going off his own left side. And Green Bay races out in front by the score of 20 to 10. That's their biggest leading margin. Gerald Hedrick was taken out by one of those good offensive guards of Green Bay, Fuzzy Thurston, who led the way. Don Chandler is in to try the extra point. Star 
was holding, and the kick is good. There's timeout on the field with the score now. Green Bay, 21, Kansas City, 10. And Don Chandler will kick off for the Packers. Ball is in the air. Cone in the end zone. We'll bring it out across the five, straight up field. The 10, the 15, a lot of speed. Puts his head down and goes out near the 30-yard line. And Cone very nearly broke through everyone. First down, Taylor Wright. Dawson moving, looking for Taylor, and underthrows him at the 39-yard line. It'll be second and 10. Ball is right at the 30-yard line, second down 10. 21 to 10, Packers lead third quarter. Dawson dropping straight back, looking. Taylor at the 40-yard line, and he's dropped down in a hurry. Fumbles and recovers his own fumble at the 41-yard line. And I want to tell you that Herb Adley, the left cornerback of Michigan State, had Otis Taylor right around the neck, clotheslined him. Taylor fumbled, but very quickly bounced on the ball. Taylor hands straight ahead to Curtis McClinton who gets out near the 45-yard line before Lionel Aldridge makes the tackle. That'll be second down and six, a gain of four for McClinton. Burford to the left, Taylor flanked to the right. The Chiefs trying to come back after that interception by Wood. Dawson fakes the handoff and throws out, has his man, and down he goes at the 50-yard line. Third down one, Cohn is trying to sweep and is thrown. Trying to come to his left side on third and short yardage. And that means it's fourth down. Instead of a first down, the Chiefs are forced into a punting situation. Jerry Wilson is coming on. Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson go deep for the Green Bay Packers. Wilson gets a high kick away. Bounds down at the 20 and hops back toward Kansas City territory. Packers offensive unit comes back on the field. Carroll Dale comes out wide to the right. Warren Dollar, to repeat, is not playing. This is Elijah Pitts cutting across his own right side and gets out across the 35-yard line, still on his feet, to the 37. The first down at the 37. Star dropping straight back. Looking, has time, and now is smothered under at the 29-yard line. Mark Starr took one pump, and then when he raised his arm back again, the pocket closed, and down he went. E.J. Holla blitzing on the play, along with the right tackle, Buck Buchanan made the tackle. Second down and 17. Starr dropping straight back on second down, long yardage. Looking for his man, and out of bounds he goes. He's got him. It is third down and two. Star calling signals. Star hands to Taylor. Taylor hit from behind and gets to the 45 and dives ahead and may or may not have gotten that first down. It will be close at about the 46-yard line. Chandler will kick from his own 37. Low driving kick. Garrett at the 19. 20, daylight. And he is hit down by Leroy Caffey as he crosses the 25 to the 27-yard line. We are now midway through the third quarter with the Packers leading 21 to 10. Now, you might have caught at the start of the second half, NBC announcer Jim Simpson noting Packers kicker Don Chandler was kicking the ball off for a second time. There's a good reason for that. Here's Super Bowl I producer Bill Creasy. The one incident that everybody seems to remember was re-kicking uh, the kickoff in the second half. Remember that CBS would do the production of Super Bowl I and feed the pictures to NBC. The second half is about to begin. Don Chandler kicks off. Gene Wilson comes up, watches it bounce at the 12, but a flag has gone down and a whistle has sounded. As to what happened on the last play, a very odd play. Green Bay kicked off. A lot of the Kansas City people didn't move, just stood there pointing at something, and I don't know what they were pointing at. We were in control of the kickoffs and the, the communication from the television truck to the field. Lou Cussero was the uh, producer for NBC, and uh, he came running in our truck and, you know, you've got to kick it off again. You have to kick it off again. There have been rumors that they were still in commercial and that there was miscommunication, but I don't know for a fact what it was. Lou was bigger than me. <laughs> so I said, yeah, sure, Lou. <laughs> And they will kick it again. Coming up, the legend of Max McGee grows and the hammer meets his match. 
Seven minutes and five seconds to go in the third quarter. Packers leading 21-10. Lenny Dawson rolling out to his left, looking downfield, throwing downfield, and overthrows his man, Chris Clifford, at the 42-yard line. Dawson fakes the handoff, and the linebackers are blitzing again, this time from the right side, Leroy Caffey, the third down and 23. Burford and Taylor both to left. Dawson rolls to the left in a pocket, knocked down at the three-yard line. Tremendous pressure by the Green Bay Packers. On his fourth down and 35, and Wilson almost has his back foot out of that end zone. Kick. It is taken by Donnie Anderson. Anderson flags go down as he's hit. More flags go down as he's hit at the 41-yard line. Again, something that you rarely see, a clipping penalty against the Green Bay Packers when they're returning a punt. They are very careful about such things. From their 44, first and 10, six minutes, 18 seconds to go, third quarter. Elijah Pete starts out to the left and is knocked down. And I'm telling you, that time, the Green Bay defensive guards pulling were simply shoved aside. Second and 12. Bart Starr dropping straight back with time across the center and has Max McGee out in Kansas City territory. But now we come up to another big third down play. Harold Dale to the right, McGee to the left. Jim Taylor has got the first down across the 45, going off the own, his own left side of the line. First and 10 for the Packers. Dale comes to the right. Bart Starr dropping way back, looking, throwing, and the receiver falls down. Carol Dale fell down at the 27-yard line. It is second down, 10 from the 43. Star dropping straight back again. He has Taylor, a little swing man at the 45, 44. Hit once, breaks the tackle, and is knocked down again on the 44. That's a case of Bobby Bell coming up to help out Jerry Mays. On third and 11, Carol Dale goes wide to the left. Willie Mitchell is the man on him. Bart Starr dropping straight back, looking as his man Max McGee in between three people at the 33-yard line. They all converged on the tackle. That's a first down at the 28. There is Jim Taylor trying to set up his line, and Taylor, as has been found out today, isn't going anywhere. Now Buck Buchanan throws him down. Taylor says nothing. The official pushes off. Buck Buchanan, no penalty is called as yet, and none will be. The defensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs has been tremendous today, as has the defensive line of the Green Bay Packers. The fault, if there won't be one to be found for the Kansas City Chiefs, has been in the defensive secondary. And, of course, the big mistake of Lenny Dawson when he hung the pass up and Willie Wood intercepted. Second down and eight. Gives it to Taylor. Taylor stuttering at the line, and down he goes. Gerald Hedrick made the tackle. The flanker is Dale as Taylor goes wide to the left. Taylor gets a good block, breaks two tackles, and has the first down across the 15. And there again is he shown on his 14-yard touchdown run, the individual effort of Jim Taylor brought off that first down. Out of the huddle with McGee to the left. Dale to the right. First down from the 13. Starr fakes the handoff. Looks, has time. Throws in the end zone. Great catch by Mac McGee. Off one hand. And it's a touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. And again, the pass off of the play action with Bart Starr first faking the running play to one of his running backs, then stepping back and hitting McGee in the end zone. Two fine... Bakers as quarterbacks here, not only great passers, but both of these quarterbacks can handle the ball very well, help their pass offense by making the running plays frequently before going back to pass. Well, Max McGee, who played so well in the National Football League Championship game, coming on late, has done so again. Chandler's in. And kicks the extra point. And now Green Bay is far out in front. What a day, <laughs> Don Chandler will kick off again. Ian Wilson and Bert Cohn are deep. Cohn watches it hit at the 12, takes it at the 2. 
Comes back up the left side to the 10, the 15, and down he goes. As he gets across the 15, not to about the 17. On first down from the 18. And off and straight ahead goes the fullback, Curtis McClinton. Well, George, that's the end of the third quarter. The score now, Green Bay 28, Kansas City 10. Fourth quarter. 18 points separate the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The ball on their own 19-yard line. Make that the 18-yard line. As Otis Taylor hustles out to the right, Chris Burford goes to the left. McClinton and Garrett, the setbacks. Carolyn, the tight end, is also split to the right. Dawson dropping straight back and upfield, and it's almost intercepted. The receiver was Curtis McClinton, and it was almost intercepted by Willie Wood. Third and nine for the Chiefs, and they've got to pull off this first down and give the ball up again. Dawson rolling to the right, looking, faking a pass. Now throwing, and it is almost intercepted again at the 30-yard line. And fourth down, and the Chiefs will have to kick the ball away again. Jerry Wilson is standing on his own two. Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson are deep. Low driving kick. Anderson fades back to his 42, runs to his left, gets to the 45, and runs into a couple of people led by Bobby Ply, number 14, who made the tackle. Packers now hoping to exert pressure. Send Carroll Dale to the right. Starr hands off to Jim Taylor, makes a fine move at the line of scrimmage, and as a result, picks up about four yards out to midfield before Buck Buchanan wrestles him down. It'll be second down and six. Starr faking the handoff, going deep to Max McGee, who's trying to beat Mitchell, and Mitchell makes the interception inside the 15-yard line. The Kansas City Chiefs take over. They've been operating on Willie Mitchell all afternoon. This time McGee had a step on Mitchell, but the ball was underthrown, and Willie made the interception. Line play by Mitchell. The ball is on the 11-yard line of Kansas City. 28 to 10, the Packers lead. Burford goes to the left. And this National Football League down, Los Angeles is yelling for the Chiefs to go. Dawson back to pass. Lots of time. Loops one. Has. Taylor. I want to tell you what a catch. That's Curtis McClinton, not Otis Taylor, but it's still a great catch. Just a great individual effort. Los Angeles is yelling for the Chiefs to go. Dawson bound a quick pitch to Taylor. Trying to step around his man and cannot get away and finally falls forward out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. A pickup of about five on the plate. Second down and a long five as Taylor's to the right, Burford to the left. Dawson looking to Burford, has him at the 50 down to the 48-yard line. Chris Burford, that's enough for the first down and the Chiefs trailing 28 to 10. Taylor to the right. Dawson rolling to the right, looking for Taylor. He's trying to beat his man. He's in back of Adderley, but can't quite reach it in the end zone. The illegal procedure charge against Kansas City moves the ball back to the 49 of Kansas City. 11 minutes, 26 seconds to go, 28 to 10, the score. First down and 15. Dawson dropping straight back, under pressure, and down with him is Willie Davis. A loss of 11. Otis Taylor back in, comes wide to the right. Burford goes to the left. Rolling to the right is Dawson looking for Taylor, and it is knocked down at the last minute by Herb Adderley. A fine defensive play, getting one hand in front of Taylor. Third down and 26 yards. A little swing pass just knocked down at the last minute by Bob Brown. It's fourth down from their own 39-yard line. Gerald Wilson is back. Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson go deep, standing inside their own 25 to take Wilson's punt, which is in the air. This one is high. Beautiful. Anderson lets it hit on the three, and it goes into the end zone. First and ten for the Packers. First and ten. Mark Starr still in, calling signals, dropping straight back. As time, looks for his receivers. As Carroll Dale at the 44-yard line, and he has the ball and steps out of bounds there. First down from the 44, star straight back, looking to throw, and McGee is all by himself. Mitchell is clamming his back and wrestles him down at the 17-yard line. The ball is taken away by Freddie Williamson, but the officials say, no, sir, McGee 
has it, and it's a first down for the Packers at the 17. Star calling signals. Hands off to Taylor, who goes straight ahead, but not for much. Little or no gain, perhaps a half a yard. We'll call it still second down and about 10. Star back. Looking to throw, throwing out to the left, and as Carol Dale at the 12-yard line. Knocked down there by Willie Mitchell. Third down and three from the 11-yard line. Fleming is on the right side. Star hands to Pitts. Boy, he had an opening for a moment that looked like he was going to go all the way, but Johnny Robinson knifed him down at the five. Pitts, for the moment, looked as though he had the angle of the corner, but Robinson knocked him down at the five. First down five, and straight ahead goes Jim Taylor for a couple of yards, perhaps down to the three or the two and a half. Ball is on the two-yard line, second down. Star still calling signals. Jim Taylor sweeping wide at the five, at the three, and with his effort gets down close to the goal line, but they'll mark it on about the six-inch line. Third down and a few inches. Ball is given to Pitts. Pitts slides off and goes into the end zone, going off his own left side. It was hit at the line of scrimmage. Now past Woody Mitchell and went into the end zone. And it is now 34-10. to 10. Green Bay has woken this first Super Bowl wide open. Chandler has come in and kicks, and the kick is good. Green Bay 35, Kansas City 10. 63,036 looking on as Don Chandler kicks off again for the Packers. A high kick. Cohn and Wilson both waited as Cohn at the 1, coming straight up field, across the 10, going to his right, across the 15, out to the 20-yard line, and that's about all. Jim Grabowski jumps in to make the tackle. Pete Beathard now making an appearance. Long count by Beathard, who drops straight back. Looks, throws, has Burford across the 40 to the 42-yard line. That's enough for the first down for the Kansas City Chiefs. Beathard dropping straight back again. Looking now. Now decides to run across the 40, across the 45. Gets a great block at the 45. Down the sidelines and out of bounds with another first down at the 44-yard line. Ball is put down on the 44, first and 10. And Beathard very quickly has taken them to two first downs. Beathard back. Throws and overthrows Mike Garrett at the 40-yard line. And so it'll be second down. Back goes Beathard, and down he goes. Bob Brown led the way, along with Lionel Aldrich. Brown, the rookie from Arkansas AM and M. Back goes Beathard. On third down. Long pass downfield. Intended downfield for Chris Burford. And the Chiefs will have to kick it away. Less than five minutes, 4.39 to play. Wilson boots the ball high and deep. Fair catch called for by Willie Wood at the 18-yard line, first and 10 Packers. Andy! Where's Andy? Murkowski is the quarterback, hands to Anderson around the left side, across the 25, still on his feet. And hit from behind as he got to the 30-yard line, out to the 32-yard line. First and 10. Hand off through Grabowski. And Grabowski nearly lost the ball, had to turn around for it. And when he did, Buck Buchanan wrestled him down. Less than four minutes to go now. Zeke Fritkowski calling signals. Donnie Anderson going to the right side. Gets away from Hedrick, but Hedrick reaches over. And with one hand, grabs him as Freddie Williamson has been leveled and is out, lying on the turf at the 33-yard line. They have the stretcher out now, and he will be taken from the field. Fred Williamson is being carried off the field by a stretcher. The hammer is the hammer. You know who got hurt? The hammer. The hammer. That's the female hammer. Hey, Seth, the hammer got it. It is third down and eight. Rutkowski back and throwing deep for Carol Dale. And... Does not overthrow him, but rather throws Bohr toward the middle of the field, and Dale was out to the left. What an afternoon, and what a day for the Green Bay Packers. 
Anderson handled the punting this time. He's a left-footed kicker. It goes by Emmett Thomas at the 25 and will roll dead at about the 22-yard line. First and 10. Two minutes and 22 seconds to go. Pete Beathard in. Has only one setback. Rolls to his right. Going for broke. Throwing deep to Otis Taylor. Taylor cannot catch up to the ball. He and Herb Adderley collided at the 33. Adderley fell down. Second down and 10. Beathard dropping straight back this time. In a pressure pocket and ducks his head and his own momentum carries him down to the ground at the 15-yard line. So it is third down with a minute and a half to go. Pete Beathard drops back. Throws long and way overthrows and almost overthrows the entire Kansas City bench, but Chris Burford was the intended receiver. Fourth down and 16, a minute and 24 seconds to go. Gerald Wilson standing at the goal line. Kicks the ball away. A driving kick sending Donnie Anderson and Willie Wood back. It is Wood who takes it at the 31. Coming to the left side. Pursued one block. Takes down two men. But Bobby Ply, number 14, who is very quick to get down under any kick, makes the tackle at the 27-yard line. Rutkowski is in. Call signals from the 13-yard line. Hand off to his fullback, Jim Grabowski, the bonus rookie from Illinois, but Buck Buchanan wrestles him down at the 15-yard line after a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. One minute to go in the first AFL-NFL championship, the Super Bowl. Donnie Anderson hit behind the line of scrimmage, gets away from one man, goes around that side, across the 20, and out to the 25 before Jerry Mays, the defensive left end, knocked him out of bounds at the 26. 29 seconds to go. Rutkowski hands to Anderson. Anderson trying to find running room. Gets across the line of scrimmage to 25. And E.J. Hollop tackles him from behind. The clock is running with 20 seconds to go. 10 seconds to go. The Packers standing around. Not willing to get off another play necessarily. The Kansas City Chiefs are willing to walk to the sideline. That's the end of the game with the final score. Green Bay 35 and Kansas City 10. And of course, this game meant so much. It meant the National Football League for the first time putting its prestige and its experience on the line against the seven-year-old American Football League, which for years has wanted to do just that. Super Bowl I is in the books. Coming up, Commissioner Pete Rozelle joins Pat Summerall moments after the conclusion of the game, plus locker room reaction. Commissioner Pete Rozelle of, uh, of both leagues, by God. Pete, you must have been pretty, pretty satisfied with this afternoon's game. Oh, I was. Very much. I just thought it was a tremendous show, Pat. I had your monitor and could hear your comments during the game, and I thought the color was great. And uh, uh, Green Bay was what we've known them to be, a very solid, fine football team. And I thought that Kansas City, particularly their defensive line, did an outstanding job. Uh, the great observer of football that you are, of course, uh, in addition to your other many, many duties, uh, were you, do you think this is indicative of the 35-10 score? Is that indicative uh, of the difference, or is one game enough for us to go by? I think it probably takes more than one game. I think we'll get an additional reading this summer when we have some fine uh, interleague preseason games, and we'll have pairings then, of course, of other than the top two teams. And I think that, uh, while not again conclusive because it'll be preseason games, that could help us uh, get a better line. Pete, let's uh, capture something that you just brought up there. Now, is that the immediate plan uh, for the two leagues uh, to meet uh, in preseason games next year? Yes, uh, each AFL club will play at least one game with an NFL opponent. Some will have more, so uh, well, we should have perhaps as many as 12 or 15 interleague games next summer. I thought we played well the first half, and I thought we got off to a good start the second half. I think the, the, intercept, the interception on the third and five situation seemingly changed the personality of the ball game. A star I thought was just terrific all afternoon at picking up the big third down play. We got to him a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were in a variety of coverages, kept trying to change the picture, but he still pierced the areas and got the ball in there for the necessary yardage. They have good people. We had good people. We didn't play our finest ball game. They played well. I think Max McGee probably had the best football game he's had in the last 10 years. Right, of course, I don't know what their game plan was. Was, but it's very evident that they were working on our left side. I'm not going to say that uh, just because I saw a new receiver, this was a problem to me, no. Because uh, the only thing you had to do is play football anyway. You know. 
the second half, we just fell apart, but we know how well they can play. We knew that we just blew the chance. So. We'll be back. We're pretty confident. We'll be back. Back to the cornfields, huh? The inaugural of the Super Bowl, the first meeting between the American Football League and the National Football League, which took place here today, January the 15th, 